What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Spit. Smile, man. Smile. I'm here with Alpha today, and uh, Alpha actually went X1 at our local. We just finished locals. All the boys are over there. But uh, yeah, we went X1 today with none other than. This deck still existing is crazy. But uh, make sure to like and subscribe because Alpha is a cute guy. And with that being said, Alpha, I'm going to let you take over. Uh, yeah, sure. So we played Pure Thunder Dragon today. Obviously, I don't want to drag out the intro too long, so I'm going to get into it. Uh, I'll fan out all the cards so you can guys kind of get to see why I built the list exactly the way I did. Because some things might look weird, but we'll talk about it more when we get into the profile. Perfect. So, the normal summon, we're on three Battery Man Solar. I think uh, a lot of people might remember this. It's basically Armored Ganon Knight for Thunders. It spawns tokens, it creates bodies, which is great. For the other Thunder Dragon monsters, we're on three of the OG Thunder Dragon. Very powerful card. Well, it's actually not that powerful of a card, but in this deck, it's a very powerful <laughs> card. Uh, three Thunder Dragon Dark, as well as three Roar, two Hawk, and two Matrix. So a lot of people, when they cover this, obviously, you're usually on all these names. We're on this specific ratio because this deck is just trying to play Colossus Turbo, right? With the new Multarmy cards out, and with all these crazy things going on with the hand traps, it's hard to build a really strong board. You know, playing dangers and chaos monsters, it's really hard to build like those like giant negate boards now. So I'm like, okay, so if my opponent March Armies me, what do I want to do? I just want to make Colossus Ash, essentially. And so that's why I'm just playing like Thunder Monsters that I can summon, playing the ones that I can just use from hand for a quick search, because people don't usually care about these. And like, if I get Charmed on that, I can just turn a Battery Man Solar into a Colossus, and that's my word, right? So Colossus Control is the name of the game, and all of these accomplish that very easily. Hey squad, Spankle here to bring you guys a very important message. You guys see these Book of Eclipse, Book of Moon, and Dean Smith Requiem on deck boxes I have here? Well, you guys can win them for free. All you guys gotta do is head on over to my Instagram page where Card Castle 3 d has partnered up with us to give away three different custom deck boxes, which means three of our squad members are gonna be winners. All you guys gotta do is head to the link in the description follow the instructions and you'll be entered in to win one of these three insane deck boxes so big shout out to card castle 3d for partnering up with the spanko squad today you guys can win one of these three amazing beautiful deck boxes check out the link in the description and with that let's get back into today's video next up we're on a small amount of bestials the other list i'm on is on like a heavy bestial count with the bellions the whole works and everything the reason i'm not on a heavy bestial engine is because i'm on d shifter i realized that for that same logic about multi since i can't play explosively i'd rather just be sitting on colossus plus d shifter my opponent can't do anything and i hit them with like a 2000 plus monster over and over again right i just found that these three made the most sense uh these can easily be sided out swapped out whatever they're also just independently powerful cards as well as three ash blossom again just playing around the charmies and it's just generically good these are all the monsters we play as you notice we don't play any levian years no chaos armageddon there's no really big bomb card which is unfortunate but because this deck can feel bricky for obvious reasons, we can't play those big bomb cards because we value consistently just making Colossus. Okay. We don't care about some, like, something the Levianir would be great, especially uh, because it's such a powerful card, but we just don't have that option. Well, we don't have the option because we are just prioritizing this thing. And then Colossus is also really good into this format. Not because, I mean, obviously your opponent not being able to search is good, but it's also randomly good into Tempai because it just yeah. protects itself. Yeah, actually, I, I, I'll, I, I'll take a moment to kind of like, I, I, now that you kind of see where all the monsters are going, obviously I'll explain more with the spell cards that are about to be shown. You might be thinking, is two Colossus even that good when you just go double Colossus pass? The reason why it's good and bad is the only thing that really beats it is Dark Ruler No More, multiple Imperms, or really unfortunate Droplet, right? Like Droplet, you'd have to send a lot of cards. And on top of that, if you're under Shifter or uh, the, uh, Dimensional Fissure, which I'm on, your opponent can't really send monsters either, right? So it gets a little tough for them to out your board. And if they do, they have to spend a lot of cards. And sometimes you, your grind game is still pretty good, you know? Uh, if, you, if you play Pure Thunder Dragon, the grind game is really strong. And I'll get into that more a bit later. But as you can tell, I just get into Colossus very easily. And that's just how it goes. Uh, the Allure, I usually don't like this card because you're on a lot of light monsters. But now that we have like D Shifter as a dark hand trap plus this shields and other stuff, it doesn't feel too bad. And it also lets you draw into some like really powerful non engine, such as a Dimensional Fissure. Yes, it does feel great actually, uh, going first for obvious reasons. Uh, going second, it doesn't even feel that bad because we actually paired it with Super Poly. Super Poly isn't like the greatest non engine per se, but when you pair it with something like D Fissure, it's actually not too bad. And there are decent enough things where you can super poly and you can play the tempo pretty well. Keep in mind, your whole purpose is to protect Coloss uh, Colossus. So super polying away different threats so they can't get rid of your Colossus is also really strong. Run two, the Instafusion, well, Instafusion and Ready Fusion. You 
could be on more, I'm only on two because you can't summon this with a fusion thunder monster. You summon Titan that way. So it, it's not the best starter, but it does get plays going. And individually, it's also nice because we're on Mud Dragon, which also helps as an instant fusion target. So like there's a bit of flexibility in these cards. But we're on a bunch of one-ups here. A Foolish Barrel, very powerful one paired with D-Shifter. Also, if it wasn't obvious, D-Shifter and uh, Dimension Fusion are like pair with the solar because whatever you dump, which is usually the, the roar, will instantly uh, get banished, right? And then you get your play started out that way. Uh, Gold Sark, same reason. You can pull uh, banish any of these, get the intended effect. Thunder Dragon Fusion, usually people are sometimes on two, but one I think is fine because independently, it is not the greatest card. But the grind game it offers is so strong, it's actually insane. You can theoretically infinitely make Titan every single turn with no restriction, just with this one card. So it's incredibly powerful. And Call by the Grave because I just needed a 40th card. It also just seemed to fit with the motive of trying to beat like more Charmies and all that stuff. And it's also nice. I, I know I talk about the Charmies a lot, but it's also nice that because Dominus Impulse is also a very popular uh, hand trap right now. Again, we're not specialing something that much. like. A lot of these are just special off their own like kind of conditions, right? Like inherent. Right? So it's kinda like I summon Battery Man Solar. Let's say they impermanent. I'm like, okay, that's unfortunate. And then I try to go another effect, they dominant pulse it. I'm like, oh that's unfortunate. They also charm me, oh that's unfortunate, okay. I go Thunder Dragon, search another Thunder Dragon, make Colossus, I pass. And if their hand is by any standard really good, it actually can't play through Colossus. Funny enough, right? The best hands can't play through Colossus, which is a. Uh, it's it's, it's funny, it's, it's the bad hands that play yeah, through yeah. Colossus. Uh, obviously, there are some cards, like, for example, Engraver equipping uh, Requiem to get rid of your Colossus is good, but when they have Engraver in hand, they can't use it. Yeah. Right? So it, it, it gets tough for them. Uh, and you kind of apply that logic uh, consistently with the other cards. So that is. That's the main deck, 40 cards. It's a lot more lame than it's. It, it, is, a, it is a lame playstyle. But I like Thunder Dragons. I think they inherently are fun. The thinking you have to put into the actual Thunder Dragon monsters, like re resource management, all that stuff, is very like. I think that's what's fun about this deck. Yeah. So it's not it's not wombo combo. There's no Crusadias. There's no dangers. There's nothing cool like that. It's just resource management. Yeah. Resource management is like the best way to describe pure Thunder Dragon, and I think that's a pretty fun play style. Cool. For the extra deck, we're on to Colossus. We can only play two, so we're on to uh, Titan. Usually, you can be on two because you as long as you're again re managing your resources very really well you don't actually need to go into the third actually you never make the third what happens is so just to paint the picture for you guys so you know when you make two colossus you might be thinking well how do you when your opponent outs them and sure you get to live a turn let's say you don't kill them like what do you end on anymore right well, let's say you have Thunder Dragon Fusion Engrave, it's not impossible for it to be already be spent and engraved. This has an effect that during the turn that it wasn't spent, so except for the turn that was sent to Graveyard, you can banish it to add any Thunder Monster. You can add a Roar and use its Roar's effect from hand to pitch and fetch back any Thunder Dragon card from your Graveyard you're banished. So in, in that case, you can get yourself a Fusion. A Fusion can tuck back basically anything for Titan, if, Titan if you want to zoom in. It just says three thunder monsters. Yep. Right? Thunder dragon monsters, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. Three thunder dragon monsters, yeah. right? So you can tuck back like both your Colossus, Titan itself for another Titan. Yeah. As long as you have a pre-existing uh, monster you can make in your extra deck. Kind of like an infinite loop. You can infinitely loop it. So as you can imagine, you you should never be burning both out of your extra deck so you can infinitely loop and keep your resource game up. So the third one is more just for a handicap. And also uh, you'll probably see in the rest of my extra deck, that uh, I don't own a lot of important cards for the format, so... Uh, if you had an SP, I know you don't have an SP spoiler alert. Would you play SP instead of the Yeah, so SP is really good. I, when I get to the links, I'll tell you about it. Okay. Uh, why it's so powerful, but... One Kaminari attack, that's for the instant fusion and the ready fusion. I know it seems weird just to have one target for two cards in the main deck. I guess that's not too weird of a number, but because this really only helps you make into Titan, it can be tribute fodder because unironically this deck does like to tribute monsters for your big thunder dragons and turn those into Colossus instead. Again, it's very simple playstyle. It's nice, it's not like the end all be all to not have more than one. We're on three super poly targets as well. So Garura, Drago Sapelia, Mud Dragon. I thought that these seemed the most appropriate. I know you can be on other ones like Loving Defender, whatever and whatnot. You can just choose those as you see fit. I just thought these made the most sense for what I thought I was gonna face. And again, this one can flex into instant fusion as well. So it is kind of nice in that regard just to have a ability for extra bodies. We're on one anima, this deck used to be a Link Freebo and stuff, uh, which was a lot better, but uh, rest in peace to my boy Link Freebo. Anima is all right. You know, your 
opponent, it's not like your opponent isn't usually summoning into the animal columns anymore. But I'm like, so like sometimes you have some of the weaker Thunder Dragons, so you have to like sometimes normal Matrix, link it off into Anima, use Hawk to reborn the Matrix, and then summon the Colossus out. Should I explain how you make Colossus? I keep saying you make Colossus. Should I explain how you uh, make Colossus? You want to explain it quick? I mean, people haven't played this since, since like yeah, 2018. Yeah. So during the turn that you use a Thunder Dragon monster from your hand, so... Any all, Thunder Dragon effect. So that, you know, you pitch this to search this, pitch this to search it, all the things I've kind of talked about with the Thunder, monster, Thunder Dragon monsters, the moment you activate any of them from hand, you can turn any Thunder monster you control into a Colossus. It's kind of like, you can essentially, they all turn into Link ones. If anyone has ever played Corridor, that's how Corridor works. You yeah, use yeah. Corridor effect in hand to summon it, and then Corridor is a Thunder, so you make it into that. Yeah, exactly. I, I realize I've been talking so much about making Colossus without, and then there's some, might be some people who are like, how do you even, what, what does it mean make Colossus? So, I'm sorry, uh, but that's how you make Colossus. Activate any Thunder in hand, it's that simple. For other generic Link monsters, Dark, because it's a good link monster. IP, sometimes you do actually end on IP. Oftentimes it's like two Colossus and an IP. So even though your Colossus might get negated by whatever means, you can at least flex IP into your SP, oh, I mean Unicorn. Uh, <laughs> Guys play SP. Uh, SP is really good. So the reason why I'm not on SP is because I don't own it. Bonanza hasn't come out soon enough. But uh, SP is really strong because when you use it with, you know, an extra deck monster, it can banish not only stuff like on the field, it can banish from the graveyard as well. So there are turns where you're like, hmm, I can't do much except go SP pass here. But wait, the SP can go banish the Thunder Dragon monster from my graveyard, and that can get me the cards necessary to make, oh, spoiler alert, Colossus. Colossus! Right? And go, if you go SP Colossus pass, that's a lot better than just SP pass. Yeah. Right? So uh, if you have SP, play SP. But other than that, utility link monsters are also very good. In theory, these do come up like Phoenix and Access Code, but I guess you might already know what these cards do because these are more recent, but I guess because I explained the Colossus, I can also explain Titan. Titan has an effect that every time you use a Thunder monster effect from hand, it can then use its effect to destroy something on the field. So in that case, the quick effect ones are like disruptions because on your opponent's turn, you'll just use like a Thunder Dragon monster from your hand. It will chain and try to pop something, which is really good. But what's really nice is it's not once per turn. And a card that's also not once per turn is this card. I just threw my cards over here. No. Is this card. So imagine you sort in deck and I have a Titan on the field, right? I get to go, okay, go Thunder Dragon, effect to pop something. And I search one, right? I, I go again, effect to pop something, right? So I get two pops out of just one Titan. And if I'm really, really good at video games, I can go Thunder Dragon Fusion, put these uh, two Thunder Dragons back for another Titan, and then go again, pop. Oh my god, wait, that's again, insane, because you can just recycle them. Yeah, you can recycle them, you can just pop infinitely, and you can clear board. So sometimes it's not as much as important as, uh, I mean, so that's the, that's the resource game. So not only are you building your own resources, like a big emphasis on building your own resources, there's a big emphasis on how you can deplete everything your opponent has set up. And again, you're constantly making them unable to gather that much in the first place because of Colossus. Sorry, I was yapping too much. So it's okay, get to the it's, a good, it's a good yap session. We're learning. A good yap session. Sorry guys, this is post, post, post deck profile. I'll have to explain something. Uh, so I just realized that one card I think is really popular, or a couple cards that are really popular with Thunder Dragon that I didn't play was uh, some Summer Summoner. That's like the Link 2 guy in like a, a Mankini. Uh, that's actually like, I think a pretty decent card. The only reason I'm not on it is because I enter a lot of games not assuming I'll be able to actually summon it as much as I want to. And I think it made a lot more sense when you have three Colossus. I think when you have three Colossus, you can kind of fiddle your way around to actually make it. So right now, I don't think it makes the most sense to play, but it's obviously like, as I said, you have flex spots like the third Titan doesn't have to be the third Titan, so you can play other cards like that. You might be asking like about Thunder Dragon Duo, because if I'm not on like Levianir or big other dragons, should I be on Thunder Dragon Duo? I also think that like just banishing two for a summon might not be the best scenario right now. Again, because you're not on dangers, you're not on things to put, or even you're not even on grass, right? This is a 40 card list. So, so you don't have a lot of ways to put things in graveyard. You're not banishing for like big strong effects anymore, right? That goes the same with Chaos Creator. Chaos Creator is also really good, it's a thunder as well. Uh, but again, all these really gigantic, huge 
huge impact cards. Unfortunately, I think for this specific list, we don't get to play it. It's just more control, low to the ground type style. Uh, for the side deck, I just play generics. So 3D Barrier, 3 Dark Ruler, Lightning Storm and Feather Duster. Uh, Judgment, which none of it match, actually, if you don't look at them. 3 Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, I wouldn't say anything here is particularly mandatory. I think Judgment makes the most sense. Oh, this, this won you your last game. Oh, the, yeah, your last round. Yeah, Judgment's really strong because the thing that really punishes the thing that punishes Colossus Turbo is stuff like Dark Ruler and etc. So you want to have protection for stuff like that. You can run anti spell and all that stuff, but I thought like I run into Tempai, so I thought like the barrier would make more sense. And uh, if anyone's wondering if destruction matters, the col uh, the all the fusions can banish stuff from the graveyard to protect themselves. So you don't have to actually worry about your opponent going Regeki or Lightning Storm on them. So uh, you only really care about the negation stuff, make turning them back off. So judgment will protect you. I was gonna say just before we end off here, sometimes you want your opponent to try to destroy them. Yeah, yeah. Because you banish a Thunder Dragon monster, you get its effect, you start. Oh, yeah, resourcing yeah. your opponent. Yeah, not to keep like uh, harping on just how the resource management, but again, like if you have like these, these two are like the best ones to trigger off that. But they try to destroy your fusion. You know, as they try to destroy your fusions, if you end up banishing these two, they still work on your opponent's turn, right? So yeah. you can special one off this, you can search one off this. It's a lot about punishing your opponent for putting them in tricky situations. Yeah. Guys, honestly, if you don't want to think, just shift to your opponent. Yeah, uh, so. Has multiple win cons, Shifter, Fissure, and Colossus. Yeah, so thank, So the cool thing is today, I actually, I saw Shifter a lot, but it wasn't the thing that necessarily won me the game because it got called by etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. It was unironically just setting up like Colossus and uh, two Colossus specifically. My only loss today was when I could only end on one Colossus and my opponent had Imperm for those cases. So yes, they could still play through it. My non-engine wasn't strong enough, so they were able to obviously win. But for the most part, it is tough to out two Colossus. It is tough to do that under the barrier. Oh, sorry, the fissure and the shifter and it's obviously really hard to live when you get to make titan pop seven cards so yeah so uh thank you guys all for watching if you guys haven't ever played thunder dragon i know this is a deck that hasn't really seen a lot of play since what 2018 but alpha is bringing it back boys thunder dragon to the moon thank you guys all for watching make sure to like and subscribe also check out alpha's channel he'll post on it eventually just go like and subscribe and then go check out his channel and uh, with that, guys, you want to say anything? Uh, 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 Spango, sign it out. Peace.